Hi! So far, we have seen how to write a C program, translate it to machine code, and run the resulting program using a website that performs many of the things for us automatically. While this is a really easy to use solution, the ability to write code without relying on such a service will be essential as you become more experienced in programming. In this video, we will again move from C code to a program that prints a friendly hi. Here's the code. Now, if you're new to programming, still none of this will make sense to you. And that's okay. We will learn everything throughout the series. For now, let's answer the question, where shall I even put this code? Entering C code into a computer takes place in an editor. An editor is a program that allows you to input simple text. And by that, I don't mean Microsoft Word. Your computer probably already has an editor installed. However, the pre-installed editors are often very limited in functionality and they also vary from one operating system to the other. So I will show you one editor in this video that is easy to use and also works on every major operating system. It's VS Codium. If you want to download it, you will find a link in the description. Just like the website we saw in the last video, VS Codium offers a big area where we can input our code. After that, we save the file. Let's create a directory for our program. And save it there calling the file hi.c. Please note that you can call your file whatever you want. But for our C programs, it will be important that the file has a .c extension. Well, and that was already the first step. Now, please note that the process of writing and saving code will be styled a little bit differently in the upcoming videos. All I will be showing there is the area where you type your text without any menus or buttons around it. It will look more like this. Apart from the space where we can type, there will only be one important additional element, and that is the currently opened file with one single button next to it. This button looks like a floppy disk and is grayed out as long as there are no current changes to the file. Once we start editing, the file is modified and the button becomes active. A press on the button saves the changes in the file and disables the button again. Okay, now that we have seen how we can write a C file and how this process will look in this video series, let's translate our code to machine language. To this end, we use a program called a compiler. This program takes a C file and spits out the corresponding machine code. So far I have always said that we are translating our code from C into machine language. But programmers actually don't speak of translating. They say compiling. And now it should also make sense why the program performing the translation is called a compiler. Now, there are many different compilers available. Two of the most popular ones being GCC and Clang and we will be using Clang in this video series. So, how can we tell this program called Clang where it can find our C code? And how can we make Clang translate it? I mean, compile it. Now, for this step, we need to go to the command line interface, which we got to know in the last video. There, we navigate to the directory where our C code resides. If we have Clang installed, then we can simply type Clang and add the path to the file we want it to translate for us. If we were to press enter now, Clang would produce the machine code and by default it would put that machine code 
into a file called a.out. Now, a.out isn't a particularly descriptive name, right? So let's tell Clang to call the resulting file differently. Maybe hi. And let's keep that name without any extension. In particular, we will not use the .c extension because this file will not contain C code. It will contain machine code. The naming of the file can be achieved by adding dash "-o", and the desired file name after it. So by adding this dash "-o", option, we tell Clang to behave a little differently than usual. And we have seen something similar already with the command "-ls", in the last video. In this case, we tell Clang that it should use the name that follows dash "-o", instead of a.out. Now if Clang succeeds in compiling our C file, it will print no output at all. If, on the other hand, Clang detects errors in our C code, then it will print out error messages. We will see some of them throughout the series, and I will show you how you can get rid of them. But here, Clang did not produce any output at all, meaning that it was able to produce a file in machine language. We can also check this using the ls command. Yep, there it is. Let's run this file. To do that, we have to write the name of the program. Hmm, that didn't work. We get an error message, telling us that there is no command called hi. That's strange. Why was the computer able to find the command clang, but not this command here? The reason is that the program hi resides in the current directory. When we type a command into the command line interface, our computer searches a list of directories for this command and the current directory is just not part of that list. So our program cannot be found just by typing hi. We have to be more explicit and type the whole path of the file we want to run. So we still write hi, but also indicate that we mean the file called hi in the directory we're in. As you know from the last video, we can do this by typing a dot and a slash. And now it works! Awesome! So, now you have seen where to put your C code, how to translate it, and how to run the program the compiler produced for you. Now, a few words about terminology. When we speak of code, such as the C code that we wrote, we sometimes also say source code or just source, because it's the source for the program the compiler produces for us. We also call a file containing source code a source file. On the other hand, the file that the compiler produced for us was an executable program. Sometimes we call this simply an executable. Now with that being said, thank you so much for watching. In the next video, we will finally look at what the C code that we have seen here actually means. Until then, may the source be with you.